Hey booties, it's your girl I, Christine, and today we are checking out Growing Up With Asperger's. This is by Fiddle Skittle. Link for this video is in the description box below. Um, I can't remember if this was something that was suggested to me or something that I saw on recommended on my YouTube page, but it's something that I love learning about people and different types of, if they have different types of disabilities, different types of lives, different types of genders, different types of sexuality. I love learning about people. So I'm interested to see this take from somebody who is growing up with Asperger's and what that's like for them. Um, link for this video is in the description box below for you to check out. Now let's get started. Before we start this video, mm -hmm. I want to say that what I'm about to share with you about myself is mm -hmm. quite personal, so I okay. hope you enjoy what you're about to learn about me and what I got. Okay, for the people who are subscribed to my channel, mm -hmm. I feel it's my duty to tell you guys about myself, and trust me, there will be a lot more about me in future videos. That's good. But for now, I want to tell you about one thing I have grown up with all my life, mm -hmm. and that is Asperger's. Okay. If anyone is unfamiliar with Asperger's, <clears throat> Asperger's syndrome is an autistic spectrum disorder, yeah. or ASD for short, mm -hmm. considered to be on the high functioning end of the spectrum, affected children. So I do want to say, I as far as in regards to autism, uh, there's um, on the when you're on the high functioning part of the spectrum, because I I was reading a lot of doing a lot of research about this um, a couple years ago, um, where when you're on the higher end of the spectrum. It's it can it that spectrum is a large spectrum as well because you have people who where it affects them only mildly and then you have people where even though it's on the higher functioning side they can a lot of the times they can take care of themselves they don't need somebody to assist them or help them um, but it does affect like relationships job placement and things like that because of understanding and reactions and. Um, um, what, well, I guess reactions, like how, what they take in and what they put out in regards to that. And adults have a difficulty with social interactions mm -hmm. and exhibit a restricted range of interests mm -hmm. and or a repetitive behavior. So that's the basic short of it. As an adult, my Asperger's are pretty <laughs> but I love mild that cute thing with ice cream. Now, but I still have some traits of the syndrome that I would tell okay, you so he's on the. But for now, I want to tell you how my Asperger's got all started. Okay. Well, it happened around the age as an infant to about a year old when mm. a doctor diagnosed me with PDD. Since I don't remember this at all, I had to What's ask my mom PDD? about it. Yeah. And when I asked her, what in the heck is PDD? Right, and What's PDD? Her, it stands for Pervasive Developmental Disorder. And from further okay. research into it, I learned that it becomes the diagnosis applied to children or adults who are mm -hmm. on the autistic spectrum but do not fully meet the criteria for another ASD, such as so, autistic disorder or Asperger's syndrome. Mm -hmm. Pretty much it's the diagnosis they use for someone who has some but not all characteristics of autism and who okay. have relatively mild symptoms. For I instance, like that mild taco sauce packet that he keeps throwing in there. Um, so, and he said he was he was diagnosed between um um a few months and a year old. I didn't know that it could be that early dis, dis or that or detected that early or discovered that early. How what I do want to know what are the tasks and this is something obviously I'll look up on my own unless you guys know what are the testing points for something even that mild cuz i know like if it's on the extremer end right where your child doesn't start talking and things like that and that's normally maybe towards the um lower end of the year right but between being a few months old and a year to be diagnosed with pdd that ha what is the test for that you know when you're that young this person may have significant autism symptoms in one core area, such as social deficits, but mm. mild or no symptoms in another core area, such as restricted repetitive behaviors. So okay. think of it like an umbrella, mm -hmm. an umbrella that holds the symptoms of autism traits of every side in the umbrella mm -hmm. as well. Autism? I don't know. <laughs> Well, when I was two I years old, saying. PDD later became autism. And during my childhood, I was socially weird. Like my I can get it when you're two. Asked my mom if I was home and asked if I can play outside with them. Mm -hmm. I would just not be social with them at all and mm -hmm. would rather play with objects around the house or outside in the yard. Mm -hmm. I swear, I remember when I actually did got a chance to interact with people, I would always say the weirdest things. Right. Like on my first day of grade two, 
I wanted to introduce myself to some of the kids、mm-hmm. so I can make friends. Eat, sleep, fortnight, repeat. Instead of introducing myself the normal way by saying hello to the person,、mm-hmm. I did my introductions like this: Hi there, I'm Wyan. I live at insert street address here. Oh wow! My home number is insert full home number. Oh no! And I like chicken nuggets. Want to be friends? Oh no! No Just, no no! What the frig? I'm pretty sure the kids were quite. I will say that it's good that he has the insight. Um, you know, or it's it's I will not I won't I don't want to say the word good, but I, it's it is interesting that he has that insight from how he was as a kid. You know,、um, I know he said he's on the lighter side now. But to have that mindset of oh, when I was younger, I was like this, and that was you know I would say the weirdest things.、So、the fact that he does have、um, a, a level of self judgment, you know, is interesting. Used at the time because it's not common for a kid to tell them their personal info about them. Right, that's not enough, safe. Some of them found、that、it funny and liked how weird I was. Okay, to be my friend. That's good.、And、to this day, I'm still friends with three of them. Oh, that's good.、Hey. <laughs> Loyalty at its finest. It wasn't until age thirteen when my autism later became to Aspergers, and my、mm, social skills、okay. began to improve by then. That's the good. That's good. The way I was good. also progressed for the better. Now I should probably tell you about my Aspergers. Okay, so that I, um, uh, like, because I know that they are they are saying like you can. I know that you can treat autism, and you can treat Aspergers, right? But I've never like when I was doing、uh, research on it. It wasn't because that's one of the things that you look for when you have a kid. You they tell you you want to look out because around this milestone your child should be doing this because if not if they're like heavily not doing it not like if they're slightly not doing it but if the if it's to a huge degree that it's not happening for your child then you want to be mindful of A B C X Y Z. It's something that every mother goes through, right? So、um, they say that you can treat. You know, autism and Aspergers and things like that. But I've I have not seen any of the stuff that I read that it's something that can be reduced. You know, they are saying like, hey, yes, you know,、um, the behavioral therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, things like that, working with the therapist, right? But they, I, I haven't seen anything that was saying that. Okay, you can. Uh, essentially, be treated out of autism because I know it's a developmental disability, but it's something that you can develop out of. That I did not know. I did not know that. I think that's. I think that that's. I, I'm just like, wow. I want to read more about it. I did not know you can, you know, that learn like develop out of a developmental disability. I didn't know that. Characteristics I still hold to this day.、Mm-hmm. Well, let me tell you them. Number one, speech differences. Okay. For me, I have speaking differences such as lack of verbal rhythm, monotone、okay. pitch, and a particular inflection on certain words,、All、which、right. impacts most Aspie children. Aspie is what we like to call ourselves sometimes. Okay. Okay. Adult Aspies <laughs> I'm glad you have told the、us. same characteristics since May do not outgrow it. They are often unable to control their voices volume according to their surroundings. Okay. So when I try to record a video, it takes me longer to do so, so I can make sure my speech is about right to understand. Okay. After doing so many hours of retakes and editing the audio. Uh、mm-hmm. huh. Yay. <laughs> Fun times. Number two. I have bad handwriting. This is、okay. likely leftovers from my delayed motor development、mm-hmm. over the years,、mm-hmm. and I always tried to practice fixing it, but I could never perfect it. So、okay. every time people ask me to write something for them,、mm-hmm. I get really insecure of my handwriting.、Oh. So that's likely why I get anxiety when people stand over me and watch me write something basic like a signature. Oh, I can feel them silently judging me. This guy is But, an adult, and he writes like a preschooler. Okay,、oh. you know what? the The funny thing about that is that's just a normal insecurity to have. I have that when I'm writing anything, and someone is looking at me. I have so much anxiety. Okay, don't look at me while I'm writing. I told you what I was gonna write. Look away. You ain't gonna look at this. Look at it after when I hand it to you. But it's like when they're looking at you. My hand, like my handwriting. It 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 takes on a life of its own. Signatures, bro. When they are when you 
but at the doctor's office and like, can you please sign this? Yes, we need your signature. Um, and it's the paper one. I just do do. That's what I do. And it's not because I'm like, oh, that's a cool handwriting. It's I want this to be done and over with. <laughs> I don't want you're watching me. I don't like this. this isn't comfortable. This is not comfortable for me. So I'm just going to and go. So it's interesting that this is a characteristic that he shares about. Um, something he's insecure about in regards to being, a, you know, someone who has Asperger's. But this is something that me, I am completely, I completely, I'm uh, 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 insecure about that as well. Let me know if you are too. Pathetic. Yeah. You're not, you're yeah, not that pathetic. That always bugs me. Number three, my intellectual or autistic interest. Mm. Did you know many of the diagnosed Aspies will have at least one particular field of intellectual or autistic interest? Oh, in yes, that they Take can be obsessive example. about. Yes. I have a passion for making content since I was seven. From drawing really? stick figure comics to around age 13 making videos mm -hmm. and wanted to be a director when I grew up. That's to cool. College, being a wider director and photographer to now mm. making videos on YouTube. That's cool. And also, cool. Aspies show a great skill in their area of interest at an early age and That's proceed good. to effectively excel at it later in life. Okay. Mozart, doubtful example was a historical figure with Asperger's like characteristics. Okay. Mozart was extremely skilled at composing music at a young age mm. and continued doing so late into life. Mm -hmm. Aspies may thrive in fields such as photography, graphic design, drawn, accountant, etc. The list goes on. That's folks. really cool. Number four, He's cute. I have poor social skills. Because of my limited fields of interest and a low emotional ability, mm -hmm. Aspies like myself feel isolated through most of our childhood okay. and into adulthood. Aww. I do try to make friends, but mm -hmm. they often either temporarily successful or completely unsuccessful due to my lack of social okay. skills. Yeah. In the end, okay. I sometimes display a lack of interest or even curiosity for the discussions, mm -hmm. thoughts, and opinions of the people I temporarily befriend. But now I do get a tiny bit better as the years go by. So okay. that's a plus. Yeah. So yeah, that's me explaining my disorder and hope you guys got a chance to get to know me a little more and hope you guys learned a lot from this video. If you I did. I, I think that this is really cool. I think that this is really cool that he took the time to Hey, let me teach people about my disorder. Um, let me teach people about what I go through, what I, what my, you know, brain goes through, what my um, relationships have gone through, that what I go through, being who I am. I think it's awesome that he took the time to do this. Um, and I, I learned some things. A, I didn't learn, I didn't know that you can develop out of a developmental mis disability. Um, B, I can relate to. Um, a few of these things, uh, I, like where he was, he, I get him having social anxiety because of how he may appear to come off. Right. I would want to ask if I know it says he had said appear to have, um, to be disinterested. I would ask, are you, are you actually dis, are you actually disinterested or are you interested? And it just doesn't the physical signs aren't there because I mean, that's, I think that's completely workable for a lot of people. Like if you know somebody and they, I get, if you're seeing, you're talking to them and they just don't seem like they're interested in what you're talking about and you might move on. Right. But let's say you ask them like, Hey, am I boring you? Is, do you really care about what I'm talking about? If they reply and say, Oh yeah, I actually do care. I just have, you know, a situation or they might just tell you I have Asperger's. So it doesn't appear like I am, but I really am then um, I think that that's workable. It is for me, at least, to still carry on with the conversation and still talk to them about what it, whatever it is that I want to talk to them about. Um, but I do have, I do share um, social anxiety where in my mind, when I'm talking to somebody, I am constantly thinking and to an obsessive degree, how are they seeing what I'm doing? Am I, if I'm smiling, do they feel okay? Do they feel like, oh crap, this smile looks fake. This chick is fake. Are they thinking like, oh, she, um, she laughed a little there. Does she, is she laughing at me or with me? You know, I'm obsessing over how people are receiving what I'm doing. And I have social anxiety because of that. Um, excuse me. And mine stems from being misunderstood in a bunch of, in a, a bunch of cases that became, you know, an end in friendships 
And so because of that, I am very obsessive mentally, internally about how I might be coming off to somebody. Sometimes I don't care, but sometimes or a lot of the times I'm worried about it. But um, yeah, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Uh, were there any similarities that you share to um, our dear friend? Uh, what's Fiddle Skittle? To, that you shared to Fiddle Skittle. Did you learn something new? Let me know your thoughts down below. If you like that video, check out the link in the description box below to support Fiddle Skittle. If you like this video, I love saying <laughs> Fiddle Skittle, Fiddle Skittle, Fiddle Skittle. If you like this video, hug the life of that like button. I love you guys as always. And until next time, buddies.